Welcome to Long Box Diving, where we explore comics and story arcs pulled from the long box. From the long box. Very nice. Very nice. You came in there just just perfect. Thank you. All right. So, <laughs> hopefully, this flips over soon, and then everybody can see us. So, I think, we, I think we've done that. So, this is uh, February 12th is the, the comic book list that we picked up. Uh, of course, we've got a lot of uh, reviews to go through. We've got X-Force. Um, Thor, yeah. right? Venom, Batman's Grave, X Men. So there were a lot of good comics that came out this week. Oh yeah. Um, I've got to read them. I gotta read them. And oh, we I did. Not I have to. He got to. I I, I enjoyed the pleasure of reading. Yes. Well, <laughs> some of them. Most of them. So, okay. So we have an old fogey's uh, opinion. LB. Hey, hey, LBD Storm. Uh, so we have an old fogey's opinion, and we have, you know, mine, a younger person's opinion of, of these comics. So we'll kind of go through this yeah. real quick. Um, hopefully, we won't take too long on each of these books, reviewing them. But if you have your own opinions, just put them in the put them in the chat. We don't mind. Uh, we enjoy that, and we'll have the conversation about the books this week. You spend too much money. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, all right. So the first one I wanted to talk about was X Force. Now. This is my favorite Dawn of X book. My favorite Dawn of X book, X Force, and this is X Force so Seven. Far? Uh, so far, well, uh, of the seven <laughs> books that have been released, this is the my favorite. I mean, it beats X Men, it beats Marauders. I have I have since dropped Marauders off my pull list. I have dropped Excalibur off my pull list. I have dropped Fallen Angels off my pull list. Um, Wolverine is getting coming soon, so I think I may enjoy Wolverine when it comes out. Um, Benjamin Percy is also writing that one, so that should be great. This was very, very cool. If you watched our video Monday, predictors versus luck, right? We had some good, we had some good thoughts about that. We had some fun with it. Yeah. Um, but we kind of used Domino's luck. So if you remember, Domino was captured by the this peacock guy with the pe peacock tattoo, wearing the the purge masks. You can't yeah, so everybody's the creepy remember. guys. The creepy purge mask guys. <laughs> now the peachy, pr uh, creepy purge mask guys. Hey, Southern Comic Geek. Um, I got a haircut, so I don't need the hat. <laughs> now he thinks he's too good for the hat. Uh, yeah, I just forgot to put it on. I, honestly, just forgot my hat. Hey, Captain Comics, how you doing? Yeah, I just just forgot my hat. He didn't. He got a haircut too today. Um, so he forgot his hat. We we spent most of the day running around. We got all those uh the all the reward errands. books mailed out today from too, uh, yeah. from last Sunday's drawing. So all those are in the mail. So we get you know we had a fun we had a good day getting haircuts all that fun stuff. But yes, X Force. So when the Purge Mask guys took uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Purge Mask guys took Domino, they actually skinned her. Right, they took pieces of her skin. They put it on other guys, and they, mm -hmm. they became um, invisible to Krakoa. They were able to drop through Krakoa. They shot Professor X through the face. <coughs> All those fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, they actually somehow now gave something or somebody else she believes has her luck powers. She says she was rolling dice, um, and she normally would come up here. Sevens or... Sevens. So I would normally come up sevens, but now all I'm rolling is snake eyes. Now... That made me wonder. Does it mean that she now has all bad luck, and the other character has all the good luck? Um, I don't know, but that would be that would be a cool premise if everything was going wrong for Domino. Not that she had no luck, but that the luck is now the opposite luck. And I think that's kind of what he's pointing out, but he didn't point it out anywhere else. So yeah, I'm not sure if that's exactly it. Thanks. But we do <laughs> go through a bunch of things where um, guys are getting killed, right? So we have this dude. On a jet boat, on choppy waves. Thanks, Captain Comics. I needed a haircut because it was getting way too long. Um, it was, yeah, I, I don't like long hair on me because it bothers my ears, it itches my neck. But he's bouncing the waves. He's going like 30 knots in a jet boat. Some person with a sniper rifle hits him through the forehead. Over a mile away. Over a mile away. Impossible shot. And then we get, then we get this one. Right? Pizza dude. Through the across the street, hey Tacoma. Through the pizza dude, hey Tacoma. Through the uh, pizza, the pineapple, which ju justifiable right there, <laughs> pineapple pizza. 
That's a justified kill. I knew you were going to talk about that. And then My through goodness. the other dude, right? That's crazy. And then you get this guy. Well, a balloon goes in front of the mm-hmm. car. The car just happens to shut. So somebody definitely has uh, Domino's luck. Uh, Tacoma, I got your uh, I got your AOK out in the mail for you. So you should get that Wolverine soon. Um, uh, yeah, so I mean, somebody is definitely. Hey, Tom's. Uh, Tom's Comics. We're just reviewing some of our quick file review from this week. And we're talking about X Force, so somebody's definitely stolen Domino's luck. I yeah. like how they use Sage, uh-huh. you know, kind of mapping out the ma- math I can do. Yeah, and ma- map out all the math. Where is the next thing going to happen? Domino just they are literally using our video from Monday. Mm-hmm. It's statistics versus luck. Yes, that was very cool. <laughs> nice, Captain. <laughs> uh, all right, so. Um. Yeah. So he they track her down. Um. Th- then there's another an impossible shot, where Domino actually makes a very kind of impossible shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, the action scenes in here were really good. I mean, oh yeah, they were snowboarding. They were snowboarding, like shooting, stuff. And, and then look at look at that. She shoots and shoots the gun. Now, <laughs> with a pistol, we're looking at looks like forty to fifty yards. Um, on skis, on on skis through the snow and hits the pistol, it hits the, the her the other person's rifle. I I don't know. I'm not going to give the ending away. There is a nice part where a lady's trying to roll. She oh, I got my last quarter and I'm you know I'm not I don't have any money and this other thing comes and hits the button and ding 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 gets she, she gets sevens. But don't give the ending away. Gambling is for the win. Gambling yeah gambling is for winners. <laughs> um, th- but this was a great comic. So I put it as a recommend, highly recommend for me. Full of action, full of, you know, not full of story. It, it was a good comic, yeah. Do you recommend? Yeah. So you hear it from both the old fogey crowd and the young crowd. Young fogey. <laughs> young fogey. Um, yeah. X Four Seven is definitely a recommend. Yeah. All right. You ready for this one? I'm more than ready. All right. This is probably was our favorite comic of the week. <coughs> a comic I, I know I probably enjoyed this comic the most and it's the one I probably referenced the most this week um, yeah. in just conversations I had um, Thor number three I was talking to Jay about it he's like I heard yeah yeah. I, I, heard. I heard dad already told me all about <laughs> it Yeah, Thor number three this was great and, and this right here this was great Molnir, Milnir, Mjirnir, say it. Mew Mew. <laughs> yeah, Mew Mew. Look, look at the, and, and so my first thought was, what is all that purple goo all, I mean the hammer, the wrist, everything is drawn just, that is awesome. With the lightning arc of it, arc, hey, aggressive, relaxing, how you doing, man? Uh, the lightning arcing off of it, I I was like, what, that is fantastic, the art. Mm-hmm. But, but what is the goo? And it dawned on me what the goo was. Now, if you remember, <laughs> Don. Yeah, you remember from last last book, he threw the hammer through the hand of Galactus and knee, and then back through the knee. Yeah, I think that's that's Galactus's blood. Yeah, that's what I think. Flesh. That's crazy. Cartilage. Um, <laughs> that that was crazy. All right, so oh. we get this whole idea. There's a lot of there's a little pros in here, where Thor is so old. That he has done so many things that he's forgotten most of what he's done. Um, and there was a part in here where it's talking about he fought a war for uh, what, two years. Yeah. Um, two years straight, nonstop, fought this battle against no thousands. Food, no, no food, drink, no rest, no nothing. nothing. Two years straight, fought him, and, and but he doesn't remember it. And if, I was like, wow, that is... That he said is, if you remind him, he won't know what, what he fought for. I don't know, it's, it, happened, it was like a, a drop of water. It's like a couple seconds in our life. Do you remember everything you do every every second? No, you don't. Yeah. So I was like, well, that's cool. I like that idea. But when we get in here and Beta Ray Bill's standing in front of him, um, and Bill's like, do not make me go through you. And, and, and Thor looks at him and goes, I'm sorry, Bill. Through is the only way. Them's fighting words. Oh, Dang. And then we just mm. get this great, great fight scene. And Beta Ray Bill comes in with Stormbringer. Boom! And what happens? He, he gets pimp slap. Boom! <laughs> just backhanded by Thor. And it, it knocks him to the planet. I was like, what? 
what? He goes, no, it's like, boom. I was like, oh, boy. Okay. Oh. I've, I've gone through this comic twice, and I still love the art. This is some good art. Yeah, I think mean, Nick Klein's art is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, Critical Blast, but, you know, yes, I guess that's what the Ravens were there for, right? Just to... Um, hi, hi, LBD. So, they always remind you of things, right? Just to just to be there to help you remember. Be a helper in the car. <laughs> but now, uh, Thor walks up and goes, I possess the power cosmic. I possess the All-Father of Asgard and, and on top of my own. We were matched when I was just Thor. You, ha- you There's no way you can win, right? And, and then Thor gives up the power cosmic. And it's funny here. He goes, uh, Thor, uh, Galactus is like, you think yourself above my control, little god? The power cosmic is mine alone to to weld. You get, you are my herald. I gave you the power. You belong to... And he goes, nay, I took your power. <laughs> Ooh, snap. I mean, just look at this. Look at this here. I mean, look at that. When he, when he just jack slaps Beta Ray Bill into the planet. That was crazy. All right. Yeah, so all, I mean, the art, Nick Klein's this art. It just makes me smile. It just makes, yeah, it, it's just like, I'm reading this going, oh, yes, boom, oh, yeah. You know, it's it's like watching, you know, an action flick, you know, and watching the things happen. And then we get this point where Thor, Beta Ray Bill, just Stormbringer right in the chin, right in the chin of Thor, knocks him, knocks him back. That was like, great, perfect. And then Thor goes, because I'm still Thor, right? And he throws the hammer. And Beta Ray Bill catches it. You remember that feeling in Avengers Endgame when Captain America picked up the hammer? And summons it, yeah. Yeah. That's what, I was like, what? The, and then oh. Thor goes, and then you see Thor reach out an arm like this and go, you know, and Bill's like, mm, and holding on to the thing. And he goes, the power, but there is no power in the universe strong enough to stop the hammer once I call to my hand, right? And then Beta Ray Bill goes, and yet. And, and look at this. Oh, you could just feel the struggle. Look at, look at the, the joint of his elbow. It's popping. It's Look at that. It's that a still crazy. image, but you can see it popping. That is amazing. Hey, Metaphorical, how you doing, man? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, exactly that would... how the ravens are. <laughs> Except for not filing count. It's just like little pieces of straw everywhere. And like picking up pieces. And they're like, oh, it's like needle in a haystack, man. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Mm. And then, and then you know, Beta Ray Bill's holding the hammer, won't let him. He goes, fine, I'll just use... I'll just use Stormbreaker. Boom! And then he just... Look at this. Oh, that was... Kraku! I mean, that was crazy. That was crazy. A comic book hasn't made me, like, geek out like this. In a uh, while. It's been a long it's time. It's like, yes. And, and Thor just calls the hammer to him. And he goes, I told you. And, and then, you know... I told you, you know, yield, yield, please, brother. I am not your brother. And and Thor's like, fine. And then next thing you know, boom, the rainbow bridge comes down, slamming into the ground. And he goes, if you wish to continue this insanity, then I am so- truly sorry, Thor. Through is it's the, the only, only way. way. Oh. Okay, this Late. book goes through so many different aspects. It's a brother-on-brother Ooh. fight. It's a god versus a demigod type thing. Yes, and then the wife shows up. The, the <laughs> wife shows up and says, "All right, buddy, the only way through, only way is through. Through is the only way. Mm. We're now gonna have a husband and wife fight. Well, I don't know if they're still married, but can you? I cannot <laughs> wait for issue issue four. Oh my goodness! I am having so much fun with this comic, and from the old fogey, is a definite recommend. The writing is great. The art is amazing. It's just one of those books that makes you smile. And it's been way too long since we've had those. So, yeah, it's a recommend. All right, Young Fogey says recommend. So we're going to call you now Young Fogey? Uh, sure. All right. <laughs> sure. <coughs> All right, so on to... On... Should we have left that one for last? I don't know. We may go back to it later. <laughs> All right, so the next one we picked up was uh, Venom number Venom. 23. All right. Venom 23. This was good. All right. So we have Venom. We had the whole Maximum Carnage thing that went on. We know that Venom and Eddie Brock actually kind of absorbed the Carnage symbiote as mm-hmm. well. 
Um, and he knew it's a problem because he's hearing double whispers in his head. There's only so many voices in your head that you can have at any given time. So, Why are you looking at me? <laughs> you, need, you need to go ahead and exercise some voices out of your head. And that is kind of what's happening here to Eddie Brock. He goes, the only place I know to get some peace and quiet is to run out to this island that I was stuck on before and, and get rid of it. Mm-hmm. And remember the last issue, the Carnage symbiote had clapped on his hand and we open up with yep. his severed hand. What a shot open up on it. His severed Oh my goodness, that's amazing. His severed hand. That's crazy. All right, so we get Eddie Brock, you know, he is he he takes a blade, puts it in the fire, slams it down on his wrist, cauterizes it. He's wrapping things up. He goes, "Come on. You got to yo yo you could do it, Daddy. Don't give up." Right? I could just hear this uh rocky type voice in my head. And do it. The art no. to visualize it. It actually starts going blurry. Yeah. They, here, yeah. Look it, at this. It goes blurry. There's dark lines. He's like, no, you cannot You cannot pass out. It's blurred oh, in, blurred out. Hey, Gold Gauntlet Comics. How you doing, man? What's up? Um, and so Eddie Brock ends up going up, and he's going to take it up. He kind of flip over to his son. Now, his son, we don't know what's going on with Dylan yet. Mm-hmm. We know Sleeper's there. We know Sleeper could not merge with yeah. Dylan. Now, Dylan's got a piece of the Carnage symbiote, but he's like, no, that's actually Grindel, the Grindel symbiote. And he can actually, um, the Grindel symbiote doesn't merge with him. He can actually infect the Grindel symbiote. And he can. T- he told it, hey, show me Null. But he didn't show him Null. It actually showed him Eddie. Now, Eddie is climbing a mountain. Now, he's chopped his arm off. He suffers from blood loss. He's climbing a hill in a, in a rainstorm. Shirtless. You gotta be shirtless when you're doing this. Cause why not? You need, you need more traction. <laughs> and you need a burned th- tattoo on your back that says, "God is coming." Ooh, ooh, right? ooh, ooh. You need all of that if you're gonna be pulling off these kind of heroics, right? So then he climbs up the tower. Of course, Dylan's watching. His eyes turn black. He starts levitating. And, and yes, he starts levitating. Some creepy stuff. The kid is creepy. Stop it. <laughs> And so he crowns up the tower and they're like, what, you're going to call for help? He's like, no, man, I know how to separate you two. And he does. He grabs, and they're like wrapping around him. And you can see the, the, the art, I think it was Bagley. Um, yeah, Bagley yeah. in the art does this wrap around where you can see both the Carnage symbiote and, and Venom oh, symbiote wrapping around his face at the same time. So he's climbing up this giant metal tower, and he's like, <coughs> the only thing, the only thing that can get rid of you. Yes. Thor. And he grabs, and he's like, the only thing that can beat you, Thor. And then we have another awesome Thor moment without Thor. That is amazing. Look at that. Zrock! And we get lightning He's getting, you know, the whole nine yards. You get to see the Carnage symbiote fly off one direction. You see the Venom symbiote fly off the other direction. It, all the monkeys get electrocuted, whatever them. they are. And now we have both symbiotes out there, you know, moving around. Like, hey, we're going to eat you. Now, that's what I, they don't say that. They're just kind of, they both want Dylan, or uh, Eddie Brock. He starts to pass out. He wakes up, staring into Captain America's eyes. Now, I cannot say I've ever... Want it to wake up, staring into Captain America's eyes, and I doubt I ever will. But if you're if you're stuck on an island and you're dying, I guess Captain America, I'd be happy <laughs> Captain America came and saved me as well. But he's like, hey, my other isn't here, and Captain's like, hey, we can't go back because all right, that looks nuclear. I'm assuming it's nuclear because it is a whole island. Um, Wait, did they get rid of both symbiotes? Both symbiotes apparently were still on the island. They launched a, launched a missile. Eddie's like, no, no, no. You know, big no, right? And then kaboom, right? All right, so this left me, again, on a cliffhanger. Is Venom dead? I, it can't be dead. But Is Carnage dead? Is Carnage dead? Or are they both alive? Because they both promised to go back with Eddie. <clears throat> Can they live through a nuclear blast? Are we about to find out something next week or next month that... that... I don't know. I mean, he, Eddie said the only thing that could do it was Thor. Well, well, fire, sound, and electricity. 
right? Those are the things. So a, a nuclear blast, I would assume, qualifies under the fire. And sound. And sound. So. Oh, let's hope. <laughs> all right. So I recommend it. I'm not highly recommending it. I'm recommending it. It's solid. It was very good. Yeah, the art was, art was pretty good. Begley's always been good. Yeah, the art, uh, the transitions between consciousness and unconsciousness, that was cool. They faded into America, Captain America's face. Um, yeah, that's a recommend. It's not a super recommend, but it's a good story if you was, have was, the money. Yep. All right. <laughs> so, Old Fogey says recommend. Young Fogey says recommend. Focus on Thor, though. <laughs> Thor. X-Force. All right. Venom. Now, the next one we got was Bat the Batman's Grave. Mm. The, some good moments in it. The Batman's Grave. All right. This this is written by uh, Warren Ellis. Uh, Hitch is doing the art. Um, and there's some good stuff in here, right? The, the main thing I like about this is the fact that Warren Ellis lets Hitch do a lot of the storytelling. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fight scenes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good dynamic fight scenes. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is just, it is beautiful sometimes. What, you know, we got a first page has words, then second page, no words. Third page has one word, sir. I mean, that's it. It's just great. Uh, and, but there were some, there's some, um, there's some good scenes here. It says, uh, so he's in there talking to the warden of the insane asylum. Mm -hmm. That's very kind of you, Warden Arkham. I'm a very kind man. I run a hospital for hopeless, broken people. After all, how are you feeling? <laughs> um, fine, thank you. Really, really, does something make you think otherwise? Well, you are dressed as a bat. <laughs> I feel I should remind you that I still have a room reserved for you for the day you admit you need help. <laughs> That's great. That's Ooh, great. I was like, that is fantastic. And then we, we're going through the insane asylum. Uh, because that's where Commissioner Gordon wanted to meet. Well, they needed to meet because the guy who committed the first murder at the beginning. Yeah. <clears throat> he has the hair that sticks out like this. He looks sort of like a clown, but he's got like a scar Arnie, up this, what, like what's somebody. His, huh? his name is something Arnie. Uh,. Yeah, he looks like this. He looks like that. He's just got hair sticking out the side. He's got, like hair sticking out everywhere. It's like All a right. Professor X turned into a clown. And the next thing you know, there is guys shooting Batman. They shoot the guy, the guy, the clown dude. You know, he looks like he was on a Bar uh, uh, The Simpsons. Yeah. Um, a Krusty. He looks like Krusty, the clown <laughs> from The Simpsons. That's what he looks like to me. But the guy, you know, shooting Batman. And then we got some dress. Look at these. Beautiful fight scenes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just just great fight scenes here. Um, Batman throwing things around. Batman beating this. And then you come to realize these guys are not here for Batman. These guys are here to get Commissioner Gordon. They're after the justice system. They're, they're after the justice system. And apparently there is a, a group out here. Um, there's a guy named Stanek. Um, there's a, I forgot the name of the group, but there is a group that's behind this all that Batman's trying to figure out what he is. Now, he's got to get... What's up, Perry? Hey, Perry, how you doing, man? He's got to get Commissioner Gordon out of the hospital now through all these guys that are there because they're after Gordon. They're not necessarily after Batman. Now, Batman still won't let Gordon shoot anybody. He goes, if you have to shoot him, just shoot him to wound him. You're an idiot! <laughs> because he told him, no, no killing. Gordon's like you're an idiot. <laughs> like this is there was a there was a good conversation between Gordon and Batman after Batman got shot. And Gordon's like, "You bulletproof? Yeah, <laughs> yeah." He said, like, "Where did the cape come from?" He's like, "I found it in a dumpster outside of MIT." <laughs> did you make it or buy it? Because that's something we could use. No, I found it in a dumpster outside of MIT. You're lucky it came in black. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, so this is. A recommend for me. It's not a high recommend. It's a recommend. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the storytelling in it. Um, and the conversations between the characters are just. I get this before I did um Venom. I would I would see that this was a good one. All right, yeah. so recommend for me. Definitely. Yeah. All right, so old Fogey says recommend. Young sure. Fogey says recommend. <laughs> hey, Superior Hero Review, how you doing? Um, all right, so next we got X Men. X Men. Number six. So this was solid. Oh, yeah. This was solid. Now, most of them to me have been solid in the X Men line. I do have one issue. The stories don't seem to ever link together. <laughs> Last week we're breaking into a time vault, and uh, X23 and Sync 
and Caliban go in. It's been five months, so something like 500 freaking years for these guys. And then now we're over here with the, with with Mystique. And not even a mention of what happened over there. We still haven't talked about the, the, the botanist ladies. <laughs> so I but this was a solid book. I yeah. I really liked it. Um and so we open up with her and Destiny talking, and Destiny basically tells her something's gonna happen. All right. Something's gonna happen. There's gonna be an island. The, not the first island, but the last one. All right. So, and then we get we get back into uh, Powers of X and House of X, where everybody went up to that space station. Yeah. And Mystique planted the flower, and then you know she got shot out into space and whatnot. So we kind of go back there, where she basically was told that was what she needed to do to get Destiny back. Now Destiny's dead. And we know from other issues that they want Destiny to stay dead because she can see something that they don't want her to see. All right? We don't know what that is yet. Is it because they don't want to see it either? Is it because that's not really Xavier? Um, it, is it because if you can see the future, you know where all this is going to end? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And, and uh, So that is good, having that, that mysterious part here. But it's getting to the point that Mystique is getting to know that they're not going to do this for yeah. her. Um, and they're like, well, you put the plant there, but... Now, this is like dealing with my, my siblings. But you didn't do this. And so you got to do that, too. And then you go and do that, and you come back. They're like, but... You know, it's that's what's going on here. You gave like, a mouse a cookie. Yeah, but you didn't do this. And so she's like, fine, I'll go back. And she does. She goes to the space station, plants it back in House of X. She dies, comes back. Still haven't resurrected Destiny. And they're like, oh, but but we need you to go back and uh. verify that it's working. She goes back to the space station. Again, she walks around, looks at what the, they're doing, looks at all the... And she, she could have killed the lady, chose not to. And then she sees they're building a Nimrod-type device. Most of us is beyond my kin, but it looks to me that your belief that Nimrod comes from the Mother Mold was wrong. And also, there's a scientist, Allie Greger, who's building something that looks just like one. Um, and then Magneto's like, why didn't you take care of her? Now, what's one of the rules for Krakoa? Don't kill humans. Don't kill humans. She says, haven't you heard? We have laws. He's <laughs> like, not for that. Not for them. And let's be honest, not for you. If that's you thought a, it needed to be doing, why didn't you do it? That's not a Charles Xavier saying. No. Honestly, that's not really a good guy saying. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad guy saying, up, but it's James? not really a good guy saying either. Hey, James, how you doing, man? Th that is that is somebody that's ambiguous. It's in the middle, right? There, it's kind of that gray line. Are you, if you're doing it for national security, is it okay? You know, we're kind of getting this. It's lawful evil. It, a lawful evil in the D and D term. So, uh, so it's kind of a. All right, yeah, James, send me that email because I've got the book. I didn't mail it out yet because I didn't have your address, but I got everybody else's out. Um, but definitely get me your email so I can, or your address so I can send you the your book. All right, so, you know, so I, we have this whole thing going on. I like that. I enjoy that um, because I like some of those deeper plots. I like those deeper things in the story. I kind of like my story to tie together a little bit, and it does sort of, you know, kind of ties back four issues over here and I like more cohesion. But then again, they won't give her destiny. She's sick of it. I want my wife back. And she will return when you've earned it. Why does everybody else get to come back but not destiny? They're lying to her and they know and she knows it. And so she goes back and we kind of get this whole idea here and, and oracle says there will be an island not the first but the last this place will seem to be a hope for our kind they will invite you in lift you up then deny you the one thing they want and they will promise it to you but they will not do, they will do everything they can do to not honor their word because they're afraid they want us blind for some reason but you and i my dear we are born to see um hmm. what are they hiding what did destiny see we know destiny played a part in the House of X, Powers of X, she kind of talked to Mat uh, Mariah McTaggart in a certain point, saying, "If you only have so many lives, you know, if you do this again, you're, you know, I only see ten, right? We see Destiny plays a role in here somewhere, but we don't know what. 
But she did say, And when those days come, remember these words, Bring me back. Hey, Mastodon, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. Bring me back. And if they cannot, if they will not, then burn that place to the ground. All right, so it's about to go off on the island. Because when, when, Ma when Mystique gets pissed... You know, things are going to go nuts. All right. I don't know who's going to side with her, but I'm pretty sure she's got a lot of people that will side with her. I'm also pretty sure she's going to bring Sabretooth out of that pit. And yeah. she's, going to she's going to let him loose. Things are going to go things are going to go crazy because they won't bring back Destiny, but they're they're trying to pull her along. And I don't think Magneto and Xavier can do it, keep going forever in this little game they're playing. Um, I call it the brother game. Um <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't do no 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 at some point you're gonna give me what i asked for because i've earned it already so if you pay don't up, give it to me or we'll take care of this and burn it to the kick ground. you destiny said burn it to the ground man yeah. all right imagine if she sides with the peacock guy and the the, the purge mass dudes <laughs> what what if she helps side with the botanists and the the crazy bird watching old men that haven't come yet but i'm sure they're going to be in an issue of x-men soon it's a thing for you now, isn't it? It's a thing. I'm lobbying for it. Hickman, you got old <laughs> botanist ladies. I want old wa bird watching men. Oh, my goodness. I want it. Mm. All right. So, recommend for me. It was a good book. It was a good, it's a, it was a solid book. I, I really enjoyed it. Old Fogey says, rec not high recommend, but a recommend. Yeah, yeah, it's a recommend, especially if you're already in the story. If you're joining in the middle, then just start at the beginning. Yes. I mean, it, it wasn't really an action book. It was more of this, the plot, yeah, this plot thickens, right? The plot thickens. It's like you know? a, the threat. Mm -hmm. All right. So next. All right. Was Ave <laughs> Savage Avengers number 10. Savage Avengers number 10. Gary Duggan, Zercher. Now, Zercher's art is okay in here. I'm not a big fan of Zercher's art, but it was okay. It was good. Um, and Dugan is a very solid writer. He's not one of the top tier writers for me, but he's solid. I like his stuff for the most part. I'd um, much rather have uh, a level six than someone who does nine and then two and then nine. Yes, I like solid. I read it all the time. I'm not real big on his Marauders, but Savage Avengers is that <laughs> has been very very solid, and this yeah. is good because you have you have um, Doom, Doctor Strange. And Conan the, the Barbarian. Barbarian. Yeah. yeah. That go to find Colin Gath. Now, we end the last thing because uh, Doctor Strange is about to die. Doctor Doom calls in his final resort, and it's an armor, as a Doom armor, and he becomes the Iron Wizard. The Iron Sorcerer Supreme. Wi it was. <laughs> <coughs> I mean. It's when magic and technology mixes. I mean, look at this. You've got this. You got the cape around. What? Look at that. It was great. That was fantastic. The iron. So we have uh, Doctor Voodoo is also trapped there, and he's like, "I feel myself dying. Hurry!" And so Colin Gath yeah. has had all his skin burned off. I mean, look at this. No, that's nasty. And, and he's got snake on snake hands, a snake hand, and he's wielding magic, throwing things around. Um, it's all that. It's all that you know he can do to keep up, and he's able to get Conan free. Uh, just a ton of stuff going on. A good fight. Doom gets in there, you know, punching Colin Gath. They finally pop the lid off of where uh, uh, Doctor Voodoo is, and then we see that that what the crap exactly what the crap is that? All right, so if anybody is a Lovecraftian. That's called gross. That is Shuma Goroth. He is a Lovecraftian horror monster yeah. who Colin Gath is trying to summon, and if he gets him onto the earth, it's going to like completely destroy the earth. I mean, that, that's what the old old gods do, right? They just destroy everything. So you've got a barbarian. You've got he's now Doctor Doom. Hold him off. I have to do surgery. He's got to surgically remove. That's strange, right? A, a, a Cthulhu type monster strapped to his buddy's head. Yeah. That was great. That was great. 
I mean, but you have magic flying around. You've got, you know, strength. I, I mean, love... Doom is getting his butt kicked. Conan is getting his butt kicked. I love Conan's response to Doom to, uh, Strange doing surgery. You take too slow. You do so. Right, yeah, look at it. Look at Doctor Doom gets cut, man. It is. It is all in. It is all going on. Mm. Um, and then hey, I like this part. Release him, or I will kill you again. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, so they get the monster off, and he's got to. He takes uh, Voodoo into the, basically the Loa, um, you know, Voodoo realm, and there's the god there. Um, the swamp of Ugon, right, and Cal Cal Fu, and so this dude is extra special, creepy. Look at that! I mean, Zertrud does a good job on that. This floating, long limbed, skinny, just voodoo top hat, the, the skull fate, the skull paint. Princess and the Frog. Oh, okay. The voodoo guy from that. The... I don't remember the Princess and the Frog. No. Anyway, it, it's very similar to that. And so very similar. They come back. And they're still fighting. So Strange able to leave him there. Voodoo's got to make a deal with Kulfu, Kulfu to get out or whatever or to res or whatever he's got to do. Uh, but Doctor Doom, Strange, Conan are still going out with Colin Gaff. Colin Gaff is kick butt man. He is looks like he's totally skinned alive. Looks mm. like he's just muscle. Mm. Doctor Strange goes armor release and then and goes capture. Boom and it lands on top of Colin Gaff. And just, and then they, they slapped the amulet. They're way back when they tested the amulet on a goat. When Doctor, when Conan showed up for dinner with Doctor, with Doctor Doom, and Doctor Strange showed up, and they decided to try the amulet on a goat. Nothing happened, so everything was cool, right? Um, so they put it on Colin Gath, and it, and his head goes, whoop. All right, so they're like, uh, <coughs> I don't think Colin Gath is dead. And, and Conan's like, hey, we've got to prepare um, that this is going to happen again, right? So they, <laughs> he goes, let's cross the sand and get ready to go. And, and Strange, or Strange looks at Doom, goes, any objections? No. And then they open a portal and they teleport him back to South America. He goes, filthy wizards, if our paths cross again, I will choke you with your own robes. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Yep. Uh, no. A, a formal announcement. No real live animals were hurt in the demonstration of this comic. The goat actually lived through the the amulet thing. Yeah. Why the heck people are like, oh, poor goat. But, uh, yeah, he got what he deserved. Colin Gath and Doombot both got their heads chopped off. But let's care about the goat. And and, and the, the octopusy thing, the... Lovecraftian yeah, that, that octopus. Thing got that thing got well. No, no. I think it's still living. I think Colin, it, you know, whatever. All right. So then we get Doctor Doom and Strange teleport into Strange's house, and he goes, "We got to be ready." I mean, look at that. They are white. I have, I don't think I've ever seen Strange or or Doctor Doom flat on his back like that. Going, I'm wiped out. I am wiped out. <laughs> Oh, we gotta get ready. That was that was awesome. Yeah, but I can't move. Can That's you? because he's the goat goat. Uh, we love dad jokes here. Keep them coming, son of the comic geek. I thought about that one, but you were too slow. No, I didn't. You were too slow. I thought better of it. All right, I don't know because I don't know if we can stop Colin Gath. He goes perhaps with Mephisto. All right, so basically said I don't think we can stop Colin Gath. Let's talk to the devil. <laughs> Let's make a deal. With if the it's devil. getting that bad. <laughs> All right, so this this was a recommend for me. I enjoyed it. From old fogey, recommend. But yeah, we need some milk. Young fogey, yeah, it was okay. I thought you said it was boring. No, I was referring to this one. Oh, sorry, we were on the wrong book. That one, that one was full of action and did you enjoy? Pretty it? Good, yeah. Recommend, medium recommend. Low yeah. recommend. Medium. Medium. Medium recommend. All right. Pretty good. Next. <laughs> this one was the... Uh, All right. Uh, so, yeah. this was Batman and the Outsiders, number 10. It's a cool looking cover. Um, The cover is great. The art in here, Dexter Soy, is one of the top tier artists for me. Great art. Brian Edward Hill is one of the... one of the, A good writer. I enjoy his work, but... 
this comic was just basically there's, about laying plot. There is too much of a good thing. There, there it's just about plot. There wasn't a lot of action. There wasn't a lot of stuff going <laughs> on. I mean, there was some fight scenes, but yeah. Um, honestly, most of this was just laying plot, and by the time you got to the action, he was already bored. But I mean, it was pretty cool. She threw a butter knife into the guy's throat, and it was great. Yes, that's a Tyler <laughs> Kirkman cover. Um, I like the ghost image of them in the back and the the outsiders yeah. all over the ground. It, yeah, it is a fantastic is, thing. Is, hey, Zclex, welcome to the stream. We're just reviewing this is dope. Uh, this week's pull. All right, so the cover was great. Yeah, and you know. We get some good talk between, you know, Batman and uh, uh, Sophia. Yeah. Um, and it's just basically you need to choose and decide who you want to be. All right. So four pages of that. Do you want to be a superhero or do you just want to be a normal person? Um, then we get several pages of conversation between um, Orphan and Signal and um, Katana. Hey, we need to figure out what we want to do. Then we get Batman and an investigative journalist who talk for several pages about some bad guys. Talked about bad guys. Talked about bad guys. Then we get several pages of Lady Shiva and Black Lightning having dinner. Talking about um, you know, what you know, she needs his help with Razal's ghoul and all this kind of stuff. Um but they, all that kind of stuff, right? So, but then, you know, then we get a little bit of action. We get this nice, you know, Lady Shiva, without looking, turns around, throws a knife through that dude's neck. We got shooting. Then it kind of just kicked into gear. We got one of the uh, bad guys jumping into the car. We got Black Lightning shooting. Can you handle them? Yeah. Cover yes. your ears. Boom! I mean, look at that. <clears throat> that was that was that dope. is fantastic. That was pretty cool. And then she just, like wipes out the car. She's crawling out. Their boyfriend, and she shoots him in the face, or maybe bodyguard. He's like, maybe both. Martina, help me. So if you know, oh Martina, Martina, <laughs> help me. Now, dude, dude, if you're the bodyguard, you're like, go, go, save yourself. No, he's like, a, he looks like a whiny boyfriend going, Martina, please save. don't leave me. No, she goes, and I need better bodyguards. <laughs> shoots him in the face. Ooh. Oh, all right. She ends up on the beach. They go and confront her. And then she gets shot in the face. Yeah, she was about to reveal uh, Ra's plans. Yeah, she's about to reveal Ra's al Ghul plans. Caliber shows up along with the dude from Detective Comics. Um, he was wearing the... Well, I don't know if it's the same dude. But there was an alien helmet that allowed them... <laughs> yep. It's from when Brian Edward Hill did Detective Comics. Um... A couple is couple issues back in that, it was a, a alien helmet that allowed him to see slightly into the future and within a fight. Okay, so almost like a predictor ability. Precog, uh, 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 pre like precog, precog, because he was able to see what would happen. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Dramatic rendering by me. I, I do. I, I do voices. I can't help it. Oh, please. Um, but this was fantastic. And then we get this final page here. Where they rush in, and then Signal, Orphan, and Katana show up. They're like, I hope you don't mind us improving the odds. Mm -hmm. Right? They now have superpowers, courtesy of Ra's al Ghul. I don't know exactly what the superpower does. We got a lot of plot lines that wrap into this, and then we get a couple pages of actual action. I have a feeling the next issue is going to be a lot of action. Yeah. Some issues are just packed with action with Brian Hill, and some issues are really kind of, hmm. You know, Perry, we've actually thought about it. Um, Just get a snorkel. But yeah, I, I, I didn't think it would sound too good. <laughs> you know, I maybe do it with flippers on my feet. Now, Lady Shiva, let me see. What would Lady Shiva sound like? We would put you in a wetsuit. Uh, let, me, let me go find a Lady Shiva... Uh, I want my daughter to trust me. She's, she's I want British. her to be more than Batman's weapon. I want it to stop Ra's al Ghul. There you okay, go. how do you say his name? Because I've heard it Raish as Ghul. Raish as Ghul. I mean, I'll do it with flippers, Perry, and maybe goggles on my face if I can find some. But if I put a snorkel in my mouth, 
<laughs> What's the point of a review? You ever, ever talk to a cooper? <laughs> and that's what it's going to sound like. All right. So to me, I like the book. If you're already invested in the story, it's a recommend. Yeah. If you're picking this up straight out of the gate, you're I'm, not going to have any idea what's going on, and you're going to be like, oh, this is stupid. I read the, la- the, the, the last two comics before it, and I mean, it's, it's not... I mean, I got most of it. Honestly, the last two comics before it were a little slow, too. <laughs> um, but I do like the writing. I, I, I like the depth of what's going on yeah. in, in, in the story art. Uh, dude, <laughs> I, I can't get more feminine if I tried. You hear me? You know, I'm actually <laughs> raising my voice right now. If I actually talk like this most of the time, so... I want to hear the more feminine one, too, it, man. This is more feminine. Hey, you're going to have to do the feminine. You've got a higher voice than I do. Yeah! Okay, that's like cartoony. <laughs> All right, so you got th- it. So recommend for me if you're already invested in the story from the old fogey, from the young fogey. Oh, that's pretty good, yeah. I mean, it's it's a low it, recommend. It's got, it's got the action at the end. It's a qualified. But you got to get there. <laughs> it's qualified. Asterisk. Right. All right. So uh, we're on the last book now. This one was pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Rosh Hashanah, Raise Al Ghul. I think everybody knows what it is. And only somebody would, it's rah, rah. <laughs> only somebody super pretentious would tell you you're saying it wrong. All right. So, last thing we got was Symbio Spider Man Alien Reality. All right. Now, <laughs> itchy and scratchy. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Um, with it, I was kind of upset because I asked for Symbio Spider Man. I saw Symbio Spider Man Alien Reality. I thought it was like a sub. Or a continuation of a story arc. And I didn't get number two. I got number one. They put it in my pool. Then I didn't get number two. And now all of a sudden I see three on the shelf going, You miss everything. Where, where, where's the number two? All right. I like Peter David. I like Greg Land. The, the art was good in it. The story is pretty cool. You going to say something? They're doing it like Star Wars. They're going to they're gonna have two at the end. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> so yeah, whatever. <laughs> and, and this cover here cover's pretty cool the cover's crazy look at that that's exactly symbio spider-man sorcerer supreme that's exactly how i'd imagine it'd be that's exactly how no there's a couple cool things in here first um hobgoblin has taken over the sorcerer supreme and kicked stolen uh dr strange's powers dr strange can no longer do magic but he can use magical artifacts yeah and so, he's able to teleport because of a, the ring, right? He's got the, the the ring thing, you know, we saw in the movie. The wax on and wax off ring. And it opens portals. Um, I got a ring, and I've waxed on, waxed off, and nothing opens up ever for me. But he does it now. Because his ring went over like four fingers. It does. It's like a super ring. All right. But <laughs> the first thing is we have this character right here. That is Natasha Romanoff. The red cat. Yeah. The red cat. Not the black cat. And apparently, Natasha and Peter Parker are a thing. So Peter Parker definitely has a thing for redheads. All right. Just wanted to point that out. We now have red cat, not black cat. Uh, I believe her first appearance was in issue one, which I happen to have. Wait, Natasha Romanov. But as black cat. Isn't that black cat? A red cat, not black cat. What? Isn't that Black Widow? Yes. But here, she's Red Cat. Okay, so this is a different universe, clearly. Yeah, clearly. All right, then Morbius comes and wants to eat Peter Parker. Um, They have a nice fight. They get into the dimension or the portal that's all blocked from magic where Doctor Strange can actually teach Peter defensive magic. He can't do magic, but he can still teach it. Yeah, apparently you age very slow in there, too. So. Yes. So you can spend a year in there. It's be about a week outside. Um, <laughs> so they're in this thing, and all of a sudden, Peter Parker goes to sleep. And then he goes outside and starts beating up Morbius. Right? And he beats the tar out of Morbius. Yeah, the symbiote. The, so what we figure out, Strange figures out, that's the symbiote. Mm. The symbiote is not Peter Parker. He's wearing Peter Parker. Or Peter Parker is within the symbiote because it's not really wearing Peter Parker. He's yeah, it's a. How do you say? Because it? it's what Peter is wearing the symbiote, relationship. but the symbiote is in it. 
taking control of Peter like a puppet. You know, like, I don't know. So he asks, I mean, he goes, hey, I know you could take control of Peter at any moment during this time that we're in there, year-long training, and just leave. But you will be there to learn all this magic, too. And then you can use that magic. Now, can you imagine Venom Symbiote able to do magic? Wow. I mean, I'm excited for what that could, where we could go with that. What happens when Peter finally figures out the symbiote is alive and he can do the same magic Peter can? They start they start uh, fighting uh, with each other separately. And then they form back into one and they split again. That'd be cool. And then we get Peter, Parker, symbiote, training. Train, I mean, this is a great page. That's and, great. of course, there's Red Cat down there. And then we see Doctor Strange with his long... Um, bum hair. Um, Looks like Jay. <laughs> yeah, my uh, Jay. He needed a haircut too. And then uh, Peter comes back and he decides to practice his magic on Doc Ock. Like He's two a, weeks later. Two, you know, well, subjective. One year, about a few weeks later in real time, Peter comes back. He's able to do a defensive shield. Ock's like, what the crap's going on? Yeah. Peter is able to make multiple pr things of him. And so be able to come up behind Doc Ock, knock him out, done. All right, so Peter decides, I'm done. I'm ready to go straight for Hobgoblin. Uh, Doctor Strange is like, hey, we need a little bit more time. Peter's like, no, I don't need time. I'm going to go take care of the problem right now. And he's able to make multiple. He's able to do all this magic stuff. It's pretty cool. Which um, is done really well visually. Visually done pretty good. All right, you can see that here. Very cool stuff. Hobgoblin's right. like... Boy, I am Sorcerer Supreme. Your little petty parlor tricks won't work on me. Uh, yeah, and then they all talk at the same time, which is pretty cool. <laughs> and then he gets up there into where the book's supposed to be, right? They're looking for this book, and then he, I mean, he gets, he puts the shield up, but it ain't good enough. It gets destroyed. And it gets destroyed, and basically, that dude's there. Apparently, over the course of a few weeks... Hobgoblin is no longer Sorcerer Supreme because it looks like Baron Mordo mm -hmm. is wearing the, the, the Sorcerer Supreme cloak. I... Uh, doesn't yeah, he have the, the eye? Yeah, he has the eye too. Yes, he has the eye, the Agamotto, and it is crazy. Good book. Yeah, Perry, I, I'm really enjoying this book too. Um, Doctor Strange decides to take on Baron Mordo, walks up to him, <laughs> and pepper sprays him. Baron's being a prick. He's like, go ahead. I know you lost your magic. Punch me. Do it. He's like, no. Pepper spray. Punch, punch me. Punch me right there. Go ahead. Take your <laughs> shot. So Dr. Strange pepper sprays him. I can't see. It's can't. called mace. Mace, you <laughs> blankety blank. All right. <laughs> then he goes, let's see what the Agamotto has to say. He grabs the eye. And then, you know, he hit, uh, Mordo hits him with magic. And then he grabs um, Peter. Now, I'm pretty sure if you look at this picture, right, right, in which right, not right, anymore, <laughs> right here, right there, right that picture right there in that panel, that looks like Peter's been knocked out, and the symbiote has taken control. All right, so Strange opens a portal, the symbiote goes with him, but the redhead does not. And Mordo has Red Cat. Mm. Um, next issue, say it ain't so. Betrayed by the Red Cat. So, I eh, fantastic. Know, I know it. Redhead shouldn't be trusted. I can't trust a redhead. All right, so <laughs> this book is a definite recommend. This is a, you know, again, I've only read issue one and now issue three. So I haven't got a full run on it, but I like the book. I like the art. Peter David does a great job in this. I like yeah. I like the fact that Peter and the symbiote are basically being shown as two separate things. And you can see them, and even their mannerisms in the R are different. Because the symbiote always was a crouch, and Peter always walks up tall. Unless he's jumping around, right? So we see this mannerism change when the symbiote takes control. It's very cool. Hey, Perry. See you later, man. Thanks for joining us on this, man. We're um, just about done. Yeah, we're about done ourselves. Uh, we're coming up on an hour. So, definite. All right. So, highest recommendation yes, this week? Definitely. Uh, number two, X Force 7. 
Then we have Batman's Grave, number yes. five. Then we have Venom. Yes, I agree with this so far. All right. Then we have uh, X Men six. That's about the same with Venom. Yeah. Um, symbiote reality, alien reality. That is yes. again with the same. Um, and then we have Savage Avengers. Yes. And then we had Batman and the Outsiders. Now, honestly, it's we last tied for fourth place. The only reason it's last is because there wasn't enough action in it, and if you're jumping in it too late, you're not going to get all of it. But this week was solid. Last week I had some. Marauders. <laughs> oh, oh. But this week was, was fantastic. So, it was great. That yeah, Thor, man, Thor was fantastic. Definitely. Perry, you got to rewatch it because we dramatized Thor earlier in the stream. So, hey, watch that part because it was yeah. fit. We, we did a great job. Go yeah, Rock! And I mean, Bill. We did good. <laughs> and Bill. We did Bill, too. Ah. And, so <laughs> and then, you know, it was fantastic. All right, I, I could go on forever. But thanks, guys, for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, we had a fantastic time. And, uh, We'll see you Sunday night on our comic call. I actually got uh, a huge stack over here too. Um, a fantastic stuff today. The we got a great. Steal. I got a great we deal. We literally stole it. You know, I'm like, hey, I'm here for the dollar comics. He goes, hey, why don't you look in this box? And he hands me a box of stuff. Tons of keys in there. It was great. So join us Sunday. We had some good stuff going on, and we'll see you later. Thanks for joining us. Thank you guys. It's been a blast. I only have so many faces. <laughs>